Let's explore a few options we have for managing our virtual machines within VirtualBox. So I have my Ubuntu Linux demo virtual machine, which is powered off. I actually have a couple of others. Kali Linux, which is powered off, uses two gig of RAM, and a Ubuntu desktop version, which is in a save state. Let's have a look at the, the states of difference between saved and powered off. So we start our machine and it will boot up takes a, a minute or so to boot up. Powered off means uh, we've, we've shut down the machine. Save means that it's like um, a suspending your computer or your, your laptop. So when you restart it, you start off from where you left off. You don't have to boot up again. So let's see that in action. So it's booting up uh, and then we will log in. Eventually. Okay, Steven, password, I'm logged in to my machine. And if we want to shut down, we can uh, use the command line and use sudo power off, or we can simply close here and it gives us three options. Power off machine is like pulling out the power cable. Now you may lose data in that case, so you generally don't want to do that. But if there's no other option, if the, the server has crashed, then maybe that's all you can do to shut it down. The preferred mode would be to send the shutdown signal, which uh, tells the operating system it's going to shut down. It's like uh, issuing a special command so that the operating system will gracefully shut down. That's the preferred mode. Whereas saving the machine state doesn't shut down, but saves the current state. So when we start it again, we start off with where we left off. So let's try that takes a bit of time to save to, and it saves some extra information to disk and now it's noted as saved so if we start it again we will not go through the full boot process instead VirtualBox loads the state from disk uh, restores the virtual machine takes a few seconds and we're back to uh, sorry we'll close that we'll return back to that message we're back to our where we were logged in at the machine so I recommend making use of saving the state rather than shutting down and rebooting all the time. What was that message that came up just then? If I actually, uh, you may see some messages which come up about the mouse, about the, um, the size of the window. We'll see other ways that we can increase the size of this window. We'll get a, a nicer GUI or a terminal at a later stage. So that's saving the machine state. Another thing we may want to do is from a particular machine is take a snapshot. So take a record at one particular point in time of how it, uh, the system is. So here we're logged in. Uh, we have some software that says some software can be updated. Uh, so a snapshot could be useful in saying, okay, let me record the state of the system now, then install some software. If something goes wrong, I can revert back to the previous state, that previous snapshot. So that's a good use for snapshots. To view and take snapshots, you can see from the menu, noting on different versions of VirtualBox, it may look differently, but there's usually an option to see snapshots and currently there are none, it's just in the current state. If I right click and take a snapshot, I can choose it, uh, and I give it a name, initial log on, login, and it takes a snapshot, okay, and now I do some things inside my machine, and write a few commands. Uh, I look at the history, which shows me I've run a few commands. I've run ls, echo, hello, and history. Okay. And noting here, we have our current state and our initial login. In the current state, I've run three commands. The initial, initial login snapshot was before I ran those commands. 
So if I decide, well, I don't want to uh, have those commands run, what I can do is I can shut down, I can power off the machine, essentially deleting the current state and restoring back to the initial login snapshot. Let's try that. And to see that take effect, we'll start. And we'll see that those three commands that I ran uh, are no longer there. Let's hope so. It's restoring the machine. And it restores it to the initial uh, login state. We get a warning message here. And this is a message coming from the kernel upon boot. Maybe it's referring to the network adapter. This ENP0S3 is my uh, Ethernet adapter. It's gone through some reset, uh, possibly due to a, a network issue on my host computer. Are ah, the commands there? What's my history of commands? That ls command and echo hello command are no longer there because we've reverted back to the initial logging snapshot, losing the, the current state. So we can take snapshots, points in time, and you can take multiple for a particular machine. The other thing we may want to do is to, to copy the machine. And there's two approaches for doing it. So I'll just shut down and, uh, yeah, we'll revert. So we've got our machine here, and I want to take a copy of it. So if you look inside the directory where your machines are stored, in my case, they're in my user directory, and there's a folder called VirtualBox VMs. Inside there, it's got folders for each of my three VMs. Ubuntu Linux demo, inside there is a VBox file, and the disk image, this 2.5 gigabyte image, some log files, and records of the snapshots. Noting that taking a snapshot each time requires saving of some information, and that's in this, uh, these two files here. One way to copy the virtual machine is simply copy this whole directory, and that's useful for backups or copying and moving to another computer. Copy this directory using normal mechanisms, and you can then open a copy of this virtual machine elsewhere, say on your home PC. But you generally don't want to copy the virtual machines if you want to run two on the same computer. That's called cloning. And VirtualBox has a way to do that. So we can copy the folders for backup purposes, but if you want to have a second machine based on the first one, we can clone. So inside VirtualBox, there's a clone option. And the new clone, Call it dash two. Node has an option to reinitialize the MAC addresses for network cards. So there are hardware addresses, and uh, if I don't choose this option, the second machine will have exactly the same values as the first machine. Although it's not true in practice, in theory, MAC addresses should be unique across computers, and we may want to reinitialize them, get new values. A full clone or a link clone, a full clone essentially will copy everything. Uh, a link clone will just copy and keep track of the differences from the old one. Uh, full clones are probably sufficient. Link clones are useful if you're uh, making many copies and you're keeping a, uh, a reference machine and having clones all linked back to that single one. But we'll stay with a full clone here. Do we want to copy the uh, snapshots or just the current machine state? Let's just get the current machine state. And now it clones, it will clone the disk, right, a 2.5 gigabyte disk image, and that may take some time because essentially it's uh, copying and pasting that, that file. It says it's gonna take 23 minutes, that seems excessive, but uh, there we go, much faster than that. Uh, and it's cloned. Here we have Ubuntu Linux Demo 2. <coughs> and note in my folder, I have this. And if we looked at the details, we should see that they're essentially the same machines. We'll boot this one up. And 
and while that one's starting, we can start this other one as well, the original. So here is demo two, and this is the original, and it's restoring. We have two virtual machines now, two different ones, essentially having the same setup. So that's useful if you want to build a base system uh, and then you want multiple servers, for example, multiple different servers, which have um, are based upon that original system, you can clone the original system as many times as you need. And we can run them in parallel. So that's some of the features, including saving machines, snapshots. For backups, you can simply copy the, the folder and for duplicating machines, we can clone them. Last thing we may want to do is, right, we've cloned, we've got this second clone here. We don't need it anymore, we can delete it. Well, that's quite easy. Uh, I'll just close that, um, power it off, I'm not going to use it. And to delete, okay, remove the machine. Now, this is important, there's delete all files or remove only. Uh, here, removing only will leave some of the, the, the disk image and the, uh, some log files possibly there. Generally, if you no longer need it, you can delete all files and that gets rid of everything. And note that the folder disappeared here, so it's completely gone. If you don't delete all files and then you recreate one with the same name, there could be conflicts, so be careful. There are other tools available inside VirtualBox which you can explore, but that gives us some basic tools to, to manage our machines.